Royal News this morning, Prince William has condemned despicable racist abuse after Manchester United's Marcus Rashford, Rashford became the latest player to be targeted online. Our Royal Editor Russell Myers joins me now. Um, this is just uh, so annoying, enraging and good for Prince William to call it out as well. Absolutely. Well, good morning, Lorraine. Uh, I think that Prince William speaks for all right-minded people this morning when he released a very strongly worded statement and an important statement where he called the abuse that Marcus Rashford, huge football star, huge star of the country during the pandemic, he called the racist abuse he'd suffered despicable. And he released this tweet, essentially, as part of his role as president of the FA, calling out this racism and saying we all have a duty to stand up and be counted to stamp it out. And this isn't the first time he's spoken about something like this. I was with him back in 2019 when he visited another football club in North London, uh, talking about how he was fed up with this sort of uh, abuse that footballers have to endure and that we all need to get together and stamp it out. Good for him. Absolutely. I hope people take notice of that. That's for sure. But I, I just wish we knew who these people were. That's the thing. I think we've got to start policing the internet, although it's going to be really hard. It should have been done right at the start. Now, look, talking about the internet and all of that and social media, on a happier note, the Duchess of Cambridge, she's posted her first selfie. Well, she has, and uh, she's been speaking the last couple of weeks about how she was exhausted and trying to uh, you know, deal with the trials and tribulations of homeschooling. And I think she's been finding it so hard, she had to go to a deserted field in Norfolk to do her first video selfie. But it was for a good cause. She was doing it for Children's Mental Health Week. And she was talking about how kids need to keep themselves active. They need to keep engaged. And maybe a way to do that is to get involved with the art. So we've got a little clip of what she had to say. Oh, okay. And whilst this is Children's Mental Health Week, there has never been a more important time to talk about parental well-being and mental health too. This is a hugely challenging time for us all, so please look after yourself too, because we really do need to be the very best versions of ourselves for the children in our care. She's quite right. And also, there's been reports that Kate has kind of helped to build bridges between William and his dad. You know, she's really, because that, you know, that was sometimes, the relationship could be a little bit strained, but she's done a lot to bring them closer together. No, she has. And this was a really interesting story at the weekend. And you just showed that photograph of Father's Day last year where uh, William and his dad, Charles, in this really lovely embrace. And that was actually taken by Kate. And, and of course, the relationship has been strained. I mean, the, the, the firm or the royal family are a dysfunctional family at the best of times. But... Charles and William are very, very different people. And, uh, you know, William has taken the royal family in a very different direction. But they, 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 their relationship of late is really, really strong. And the actual person who's brought them together is Kate. She was the one who brought them together for the big 70th birthday photograph that we see there. All happy families, all smiling. And, you know, Charles is a, a workaholic at the best of times. I think Kate has brought him closer to the family, got him to spend some more time with the grandkids and got him to chill out a little bit. So all, all for it. And that is a very happy photograph of the three of them all together. Now, the Queen, obviously the last time she had a President of the United States, it was Donald Trump. Do you remember when he walked in front of her and sort of left her at the back? Ooh, not good. I do hope Joe Biden's not going to do that when he comes to the UK. <laughs> Well, I don't think there'll be any mishaps with Joe Biden. He seems an awfully nice man. Um, listen, it's going to be a busy summer, hopefully, for the royal family. We've got an awful lot of things to look forward to. The Queen's 95th birthday, Trooping of the Colour. Will that go ahead? I imagine it will be some sort of scaled down version like we had last year at Windsor Castle. And the Queen is set to welcome Joe Biden to uh, do her first sort of diplomatic duty, really. And hopefully, Charles will get to meet him as well. They'll probably be bring William and Kate into the fore as well. So got a lot to look forward to. Fingers crossed we get the vaccine rollout. The Queen's obviously had hers and uh, imploring everybody else to get theirs, to get the country back on track. Sounds good. She'll be looking forward to that. But she's also not been amused, has the Queen, about the royal documentary that I actually remember watching. I was only 10, but I do remember watching this and she just wants to forget all about it, doesn't she? Well, I, I think a lot of people want to forget about it in the royal family. Now, this was back in 1969. Uh, it, it was called the royal family, and it was sort of a walk and all, the first sort of reality show yeah. uh, where they welcomed the cameras into Buckingham Palace. And it was a fantastic sort of sight of the times of what the royal family were like. It was the first time the, the 
public had got to see what they get up to on a day-to-day -day basis. But it was absolutely hated by Prince Philip and the Queen, and they sort of barred the BBC from ever releasing it again. It was last seen in 1973, and it has reared its ugly head once more. Apparently, it was released, uh, leaked on YouTube last week just for a few hours, but a few thousand people got to watch it. So the palace got in touch with the BBC, got them to take it down immediately. And there is a big inquiry going on about the leak at the moment. So I wouldn't want to be that person who was in charge with the film. Oh, they'll get a thick ear, won't they? They'll be, they'll be in a lot of trouble. And very, very quickly, uh, Kristen Stewart seen as Princess Diana in this new movie. We saw a still last week, but we've actually seen her on set as well. Well, yes, it's fever pitch at the moment for anything to do with Diana, isn't it? And uh, these new stills have been released from filming in Frankfurt. I think uh, Kristen Stewart is going to be uh, a roaring success. She's already been called one of the greatest actors of her generation by the director. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be a good one. I really hope it's not rubbish. They tend to be rubbish, but Emma Corrin in The Crown showed that it can be done and it can be done beautifully. So fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.